In this video I'm going to show you how to install an electric shower. Now please bear in mind this video is for demonstration purposes only. To fit a shower you should be a qualified electrician or if you're intending to do it yourself you need to speak to building control in your local authority and they will charge you a fee to send out a qualified inspector that can sign off your work. Now bear in mind that I'm going on the current regs. This video was made in June 2016. So if you happen to be watching this video any years on please always refer to the current building regs and the current electrical regulations for that time as these will be outdated very quickly and may change. I'm going to show you the considerations you need to think about when fitting a shower. I'm not going to tell you the exact cable and shower and that to use because of the wide range of variables involved. Your shower will need to run on one length of cable that goes all the way from the consumer unit and your fuse to an isolation switch which is either inside the shower room on a pull cord or can be outside the shower room on a standard switch and then the cable needs to go from that switch on through to the shower. So your considerations are what size fuse you need at the fuse box, what size cable you need, what size shower you're using, how long the cable is going to be, is it running through insulation, what rated switch you need to isolate the shower, is your shower cable protected by an RCD? If you've got an old fuse box, it won't be. And you'll need to have a qualified electrician to install a little unit which contains the RCD for you. If you've got a new sort of split way kind of consumer unit, it should be protected by an RCD. But always check before you install the shower because the current regs state that you need one. And to be honest with you, you'd be stupid not to. And if you look on this consumer unit, these are your trips. And it's what you have by there and by there are two RCDs. So this RCD protects these five trips and this RCD protects these five trips. So this shower through this consumer unit is protected by an RCD. The cable then runs through the ceiling down to this switch which I put outside the shower and that isolates the power to the shower and from here the cable then continues on back up to the ceiling down the back of the wall and into the back of my shower. Now in this installation I'm using a 10mm cable, I'm using a 40 amp fuse I'm using a 9.5 kilowatt shower and I've got a 60 amp rated switch to isolate my shower. I'm fitting a Myra Go 9.5 kilowatt shower. Now this is an important thing to note again when fitting a shower. If you're fitting a new shower for the first time and you've done the plumbing and the electrical work then obviously you can put that in the right place for the shower unit that you're buying. However, if you're doing a retrofit and replacing an old unit you need to make sure that the new unit has the water intake pipe and the electrical connection in the right place to fit the appliance that you're adding. You don't want to buy one like this for example where this fit in here is obviously on the left of the unit if where you want to place the shower requires it to come up the right so just check and there are some more expensive showers around that give you multiple inputs all over the shower so they're really useful if you need them but just check it out first you don't buy one and then need to take it back to the shop. Now you can see on my shower, I've got my 10mm electrical cable and my water pipe coming out of the same hole. When this is all done, I'll obviously fill all this up with sealant. And what we need to do here, because I've checked the instructions, and it says to use either a compression fitting or a push fit joint, and I'm going to use the push fit joint. You place it over this copper pipe, and you place it onto that fit in there on the shower. Right, so with this shower, we've got two screws there on the top, and we've got one on the bottom. I just need to undo these and take the cover off. This is the shower with the cover off and you can see there's your water inlet and there's your connector block to the live which is the brown, we've got the earth which is the green and the neutral which is the blue. That's the front cover and the three screws and any good shower should come with some sort of template and this is the exact template of this part here so as you place that over all the fixing holes are in the same place. You can use this to put it against the wall and mark it out. I mean, you could use this really anyway. If you look there, I've just connected a bit of plastic push fit pipe to my shower connection. I've just put it down into my plug hole in my shower. I'm just gonna undo the isolation valve and just flush out any water before I go connecting it up and make sure there's no dirt in the system. And my isolation valve I put underneath my shower. So I've got a removable plinth. And there we go. So that water's coming through a treat, and I know now that if there's any debris in the pipe, it's all just washed out before I put 
my shower on. So I've got a little bit of push fit pipe here. I'm going to put the insert into the pipe. I'm going to pop that up into that bracket there. So I push that securely into my other pipe. So I've now got a downward section. I don't necessarily have to do what I'm doing here. This is just so I can move the shower up a bit higher. I'm going to line my shower up. I obviously need this to cover the hole. So I'm going to cut that pipe off about there. To do this I'm using proper plastic pipe cutters. So just rest that on there straight through and that gives you a nice, nice neat cut. I wouldn't bother trying to saw it or doing anything silly like that. So that's on. I would say that looks pretty good. And obviously the reason I'm lucky here with the flexibility is I put in a plastic pipe behind the wall which is able to move in and out. If you haven't got the luxury of a flexible pipe, you've just got to do your best to try and line it all up as you go along. It's all well and good using the template as it says in the instructions, but when your pipes are fixed and you're trying to drop the shower on, you almost need it in place before you mark it out, which is what I'm doing. Right, so what I've done here, I've connected the shower up, I'm going to get it in the place I want and I'm going to mark my holes for the drills. I'm not going to use the template. I'm going to get my drill and drill some holes. I'm just going to put a little bag over the end of this to stop any debris getting in while I'm drilling. Now I'll go in with a 6mm hole. Get your hoover out and give it all a quick clean. Before Right, now we've got to put the plugs in a wall, and they've provided three screws with three plugs with a shower, and it's four holes on the shower, so you can choose which three you want, really. Now, I always like to use my own plugs, and I like to use these Fisher plugs. They've got, like, these little burrs on the sides, and they make such a difference when you're screwing it with the plugs not coming back out. Cheap plugs tend to pull themselves back out. Secure so it up and hope it fits. in loosely until you've lined it up and then tighten them up slowly one by one making sure that your shower's level. Right so it's not tight yet but what I've done is whilst these screws are still loose so this can still move around a bit I've now connected the water pipe so now I can move this into place exactly where I want it. And now it's time to connect the electrics. But if you've got an existing length of wire, you need to use a pair of tin snips to cut through it if it's 10mm because it's thick stuff and a standard wire snippers probably won't do it. If you're replacing an old shower unit, then you're going to have to work with the length of cable you've got. So you've always got to bear that in mind when you take the old shower off, how to rearrange it to make sure you've got the right length of wire. So mine is just long enough. I can now splay the cable. The easiest way to trim 10mm cable I find is using the tin snips. Cut it with the tin snips and just snip an end in your plastic uh, sheath and just work your way down it down the middle just gently snipping it until you've got as much as you want exposed take off the sheath again using your tin snips another piece of kit I got here my CK wire strippers now I've reviewed these in another video and these are an excellent bit of kit, and I'll show you how they work now. Just put your wire in your wire snips like that, squeeze them, and it just pulls it straight off and strips them for you. Just need to undo the screws to allow our cables up. And don't forget, brown is live, green is earth, blue is neutral. We need to get a bit of earth sheath to put over this earth cable, which is currently bare and doesn't have a sheath. Right, so I've cut a piece of earth sheath and I've put that over my cable. Now it's time to slot this in. To make this job easier, there's some little clips there and you can take this block off. By doing that, it means you can just feed your cables inside with ease. You just need to tighten these up. Make sure all your connections are nice and secure. And once you've tightened all these up, you can push them back into place with these clips onto the pins. There we are. 
There's the shower unit connected to the water supply and connected to the power supply. I've just got to go and connect it all up to the consumer unit now and then I'll put this cover on it loosely. Right, the next step is to secure my shower head and rail to the wall. Now this varies with different showers that you buy so there's no point paying too much attention to what I'm doing here but the general principle is the same. We've got this little plastic unit which needs to be screwed to the wall. This piece slots over the top and then there's a screw pops through there and that stops it from coming off. This rail sits in there on the wall and then there are some end caps to go over the top of this. Now in order to do this you really want to get the position of one piece first and mark it out. Drill your hole and put this one in place. You can use a spirit level to mark a straight line down the wall. Push your bar inside the piece Set it up and just draw a little pencil line exactly where you need to put the screw and by using the spirit level you should keep it nice and vertical and straight up the wall. I've marked a line where I want my top bracket. I'm going to mark a little line on the side of this plastic dead in line with that hole, okay? And that's just so I know that hole lines up with this bit of the plastic. By putting this on the wall where I want it, the line on my white bit of plastic I just transfer to the wall so I know that's the height of the hole and I know I want the hole in the middle. Now I've already drawn the line across the top of there where I want it so, so I'll come down the middle of that line and that is about by there and I come across from the one I've just done and there mark a little cross. Now I can wipe the pencil off after. I'm just going to drill the first hole I'm going to hold the hoover up to it because I don't want to make a mess so I'm going to try and do this with one hand. use a small drill bit first so I use the 4mm and now I'm going to use the 8mm drill bit and finish it off gently. Spirit level, bang on with the centre of the hole you've made. Make sure that your spirit level is nice and straight. Draw a line on the wall and then you know this is the centre line for your next screw hole. And you can see there there's a small thread and that's where the screw's got to go through the plastic cap in into there to lock it tight. So depending on where you want it, you need to turn that round the right way. Now I'm going to face that upwards on the top one so you can't see it when you stood in the shower and it'll be above the shower hose. So just put your screw through there, make sure you've got that the right way round. Push that into your hole and then just screw it in like you would any other screw. I've attached the top and fixed it up. So this is just freestanding there in the air. As what I'm going to do is push this into the position where I want it on my metal bar. Make sure I line the centre of this plastic piece up with the centre of the line I drew earlier with the spirit level. And then take the middle of this plastic bit up there, which I've already marked, and apply that again to your tile. So you can see I've applied that mark to the wall. And then where that horizontal line goes across and meets the vertical line we drew with the spirit level is exactly central and that's where we want our hole. Same again. Pop our plug into place. Put our plastic fitting in with the screw facing down this time. If it gets wet, you want the water to drain out of the hole and also I don't want the screw mark on display personally so I'll face it down out of sight. The other thing to do is on the end of your metal pole is just pop in the nice chrome end caps to finish it off. Right, once we've got these pushed onto the wall now, we're just going to pop the little Allen key bolts underneath, stop these sliding off. So there's the little Allen key bolt. Use your Allen key and just screw these into the holes, one underneath there and one on top here. And also, don't forget to put your little bracket on there, that's to hold your shower hose when it's on the shower to keep it neat. Just take any wrapping you've got off the end of your hose 
you just want to screw that onto the bottom of your shower. There's a rubber seal in there which should seal up. You'll need to do that hand tight. Put that up through your bracket and you get your shower hose once it's through there. Again, just do that up hand tightly. We've got the appliance on the wall. It's fixed, it's all connected up with the electrics, the water. We've got the shower head on with the bar and I've connected the hose. So the next thing to do now is undo your isolation valve, release the water, allow it into the shower, turn the power on and I'm going to test the shower and make sure that the water's flowing freely with no leaks and no problems with the power supply. Right, I've only rested that cover in place. I'll do that loosely, test the water with a shower hose down into the bottom of my plug hole just to make sure it's all working. And once I know it's working, I'm then going to take the cover off, I'm going to apply some sealant to the holes behind it. I'm not applying sealant around the shower because the instructions say not to. Okay, so I just rested the cover over there. I turned the controls, turned the power on. I've checked the shower, it all seems to be working. Then I just need to plug up the hole where the cable and the pipe comes through with sealant before putting the front cover back on the shower. Once you've filled the hole with sealant, secure the front back on. Okay, so my screws have gone in the top and in the bottom, so that's all secure. And there we go, that's how to fit an electric shower. Hope you enjoyed this video. For more DIY tips, tricks, how to, and review, please watch my other videos and please subscribe. I've been Pouser around the house. Ta ta, farewell.